welcome back to the channel. Continuing to do more work on the 411, the Unimog 411, um, to give it more of an agricultural specification. And one of the jobs to do is changing the front springs. It's not essential, um, but something I wanted to do. And I'll explain why and show you through the process. So if you've watched the channel before, you'll know that my 411 used to be a snowblower. Um, with a, a large engine to drive the snowblower in the load bed in the back and on the front, hanging out probably a meter or more, um, was the snowblower unit, which was heavy to say the least. Um, now obviously that weight was counterbalanced by the engine that was in the back, but to be able to carry all that extra weight um, on the front, um, the 411 was fitted, or is fitted, with heavy duty springs. Um, let me show you the difference. So the one on the left here is the type of spring that's fitted in the 411 when it's a snowblower. And the one on the right is the standard front spring. Um, and if we look at these carefully, you see if I put a, um, a gauge on here, have a look, 22 millimeter diameter spring on the heavy duty spring. If I put it on the lighter duty spring or the normal duty, we're getting 18 millimeters. So four millimeters um, larger in diameter. Uh, the consequences of that are that the ride, now it hasn't got all that load on the front, is really harsh. If you go over a pothole, um, you, you don't have a lot of suspension in the front. So something I've been wanting to do is change it to the standard springs. Um, the standard spring are common to the 411 and also um, the 421, or at least um, the late 411 and the 421 share the same front springs, this front spring rating. Um, happen to have another 421 in the workshop at the moment. This is a customer's one and the cab happens to be up. So you can see the front springs. And these are the standard rating ones that are fitted in here. Um, now what's very noticeable is how much taller one is compared to the other. Um, now in reality, once they're loaded, there's very little difference in height, about 20 millimeters. So we're talking about that much difference in ride height when they're fitted. Why is that? Well, obviously these being heavy duty, they really don't compress very much when the load of the vehicle is imposed on them. Um, whereas these compress quite a bit. And in fact, if we you know, measure between the coils on this one, 19 millimeters, it's a bit dark down here, but if we do the same on the 421, what do we got? Under load, it's about 11 millimeters. So they really close up. Uh, being lighter duty, whereas the heavy duty ones don't close up very much at all. In fact, if we have a look at one fitted, yeah, you can see the gap and the cause is actually quite large. Now, not only when it's the snowblower did it have these heavy duty springs, um, it also had a spacer to be able to lift the whole thing even higher because obviously under load they were compressed even more. Uh, with the snowblower on the front. So I've already removed those spaces. So these replacement springs um, are second hand. Uh, I found them on eBay in Germany, um, but they're in really good shape. They're, they're painted green, so I'm guessing they're off a, a military 411 or, or 421. Um, I've already fitted one side on the vehicle. So what I'm going to do is jack the vehicle up, take the wheel off on this side and show you through the process, which actually is really pretty straightforward on one of these. It's not difficult to do. So we've got the wheel off and the Unimog up on axle stands. 
Um, discovered we've got a bit of an oil leak from the hydraulic pump. So that's a job for another day. Um, but what I want to do is get this spring out. And because the Unimog is on beam axles, on uh, a, a tube that runs all the way across, um, it's actually relatively easy to change a spring. Um, Land Rovers are the same, anything with a beam axle really. Because um, all we need to do, as long as the axle is supported, which it, it is on, on an axle stand, if we then separately jack up the chassis, um, that will take the load off the spring, we'll be able to unbolt it and take it out. If um, you're doing a vehicle with independent suspension, the spring is, usually, is going to be trapped between the wishbones of the independent suspension um, and under compression in a McPherson strut. Uh, style, suspe style suspension. So if you're doing that sort of suspension, you need to use a spring compressor. That would hook on to the spring and you wind it in, one on each side, um, to get the spring in compression so you can get it in between the wish bows, bones on uh, a vehicle with independent suspension, which is most uh, modern cars. But on trucks, a lot of um, older 4x4s, SUVs, um, they're on beam axles. So you don't need to, generally, you don't need to do that. Sometimes if you've got limited travel on a shock absorber or something, you might need to. Um, I don't really like spring compressors. They're a bit of a frightening thing, all that load under tension when you use them. Um, but uh, they're there if you need them. So actually, as long as you've got the vehicle safely supported, um, changing a spring on a vehicle with a beam axle is um, easier, I would say, and probably a bit safer too. So, Unimog sits very high, um, so we could put use a bottle jack and, and put lots of blocks, but actually for a job like this, high lift jack is ideal, but a high lift jack isn't stable, so I'm only going to use that for lifting, and then I'll use... Um, a much taller axle stand under the chassis to secure the vehicle so it can't fall off the jack basically. But I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow because it's getting late. You can see it's dark outside. So I'm gonna pack it in for tonight and carry on tomorrow. Right, so it's now tomorrow. Um, we'll carry on, jack up the front. So we've got the chassis supported and we've got the axle supported. Um, whether the height is quite right, don't know, I might need to adjust it once I take the tension off the spring. Um, I'll we'll start undoing it. So there's a bolt, top and bottom, and a, a plate, um, a cast plate that holds the top and the bottom of the spring in place. So, good trick, if you want to get more leverage on a combination spanner, just put a ring on the open end of it and you can get a bit more leverage. So we can see this is dropping away, which means it might actually be in tension this spring and I don't want it to go bang at the top, so I'm going to um, reduce the height a little bit of the chassis. Now the bolt and the plate will tend to just drop down and then get in the way when I'm doing the bottom one. So um, I'm going to leave that be for a moment. Um, the nut that holds the bottom bolt, should be captive. So we don't need to put a spare on the bottom of it. So we should be able to pull the spring out now. There we go. So holding the spring in place, 
with these two clamps. There's one going downwards, one going upwards, and you can see they're shaped to sit inside um, the coils of the spring. Maybe hold it up a bit closer. Well, while I'm in here, I'm gonna have a quick clean up with some um, uh, brake cleaner, just to get some of this oil off. And then we'll get the new spring in. So here's the new spring. Um, it's gonna to be taller, so I'm probably gonna to have to jack the vehicle up to be able to get it in. Yep, you can see that it's quite a bit taller. It's going to be something like that, but we've got to get the uh, bolts and the clamps in. Uh, bolt heads are too big to pass through uh, the coils. So this is always a bit of a fiddle. So the bottom one I've just dropped in. So the bottom top one I've got to try and support so it doesn't just drop to the bottom. Um, and if I can get the nut on a few threads. I can then start thinking about Lining things up properly. At least that's not going to drop off now. jack out from the chassis and then that will put the spring under compression. So it's in, it's under compression. Um, to see what the gap is between those collars now. 12, 13 millimeters. Um, it was 11 on the 421, but this vehicle's a little bit lighter. Um, so we're in. I'm gonna do one final check, see if they're tight enough. Um, and then put the wheel back on and we should be done. Oh, before anybody says I'm putting the tires on the long way around, um, on Unimogs, um, it's always been that if you're mainly using the vehicle on the road, you reverse the uh, tread direction if they're unidirectional tires um, on the front axle. If you're doing a lot of field work, you swap them around, you'd have it facing the conventional way. Um, I'm doing some field work, but probably more on the road. Um, so I'm reversing the tire treads accordingly. So it looks like it's sitting level. Front to back and side to side, and hopefully, we will have a slightly softer ride. So, I think time for a test run, take it for a spin.
back from the test run. Um, what's the verdict? Well, actually, it's transformed it. It's so much better. A um, little bit bouncy now, but um, that's much better than no suspension at all, which is the way it felt. So uh, now if I go into a, over a bump, we just get a nice movement like that. So um, fairly simple job to change the springs. Well worth doing. Much nicer to drive now. Right, I'll leave it there. Till next time.